Welcome in YouTube to part three of the Heavensward Hildebrand quests. Uh, hopefully we finish it up in this video. Again, I should probably start filming the intros after I've actually filmed the video, but we'll take that into account for future videos, probably starting in like a week or two, maybe if I remember. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and let me know what you think of these videos. And you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Caleb Gin... Twitch.tv slash Caleb Games here, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, starting at about 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. I love you, YouTube, and I hope you enjoyed the video. That you stand here before me is proof that Halenae smiles upon me this day. I have need of your assistance, Morgan, and before you think to run away screaming in terror, I pray you hear me out. It concerns the esteemed, and now missing and presumed dead, Knights of the Heavens Ward. None have returned to the capital since all the unpleasantness began. Yet recently we have heard rumors of these honored sirs walking the streets. Tis heresy most foul, I say, and I mean to get to the bottom of it. But we will need all the help that we can get, which means, Fury take me. We could benefit from a certain individual's serendipity. Besides, if we don't seek him out, he's like to show up at the worst possible times anyway. At least this way it'll be on our terms and we can keep an eye on that boy. Mamet! Mamet! You're right. Yes, right. Uh, oh, you must be wondering why I asked you to go. Well, you and the inspector seem to enjoy a natural rapport, so... Praise Halenae. For a moment, I was afraid you'd make me beg. This may well be my last chance to prove my worth to my superiors, and if I can't... <clears throat> to full Tom's mana. Would they kill him? Honestly, with it being Ishgard, I can totally see that they would probably kill him. And that's kind of fucked up. Because, Gigi, such behavior is unbecoming a gentleman. But why, Papa Hildy? Why is it unbecoming a gentleman? Ah, Inquisitor Seer, Morgan, good evening to you both. Are you come as adoring fans or on business? Business? Always business. You may rest assured. Then I, Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, am at your service. Is it robbery? Murder? Tax evasion? Avoision? I... Wait, before we get into that, what's going on here? Much as it pains me to admit it, my beloved Gigi, the apple of my eye, the fruit of my loins attempted to deface this lovely gazebo. Naturally, as his father, it falls to me to see him return to the straight and narrow. That's not true. I was drawing a family crest for our home. Now, Gigi, I know you are fond of this gazebo, as we are all, but it belongs to Lord Edmund. You wouldn't want to steal from Uncle Edmund, would you? I... Uh, I guess not. Then where is our gazebo, Papa Hildy? And does it have a warm stove with a steaming kettle, too? Oh, Gigi, don't you see? We have no need of kettles or gazebos. As gentlemen inspectors, the world is our oyster. We can go whither we please, where the red fern grows, or the wild rose blooms. Nice little uh, callback to A Realm Reborn and the book, Where the Red Fern Grows. Sad book. Sad fucking book. And yet you've been sleeping in Lord Edmund's gazebo for how long? I don't care about wild roses. I want to live in a gazebo with Papa Hildy and Mama Nashu. Gazebos are quite expensive. 
and dangerous if not d domesticated. Is she, she talking about gazelles? Dangerous indeed, my boy. And besides, we are gentlemen inspectors free to travel the length and breadth of Eorzea in search of a case. Does that not sound more thrilling than whittling away the hours beneath a gazebo? I guess. If it's a case you want, you need not go so far. We are currently investigating reports of individuals masquerading as Knights of the Heavens Ward. These contemptible charlatans are rumored to have tricked several hapless maidens into attending private parties for a small fee, with the promise of enjoying the company of these great sirs. Those who were foolish enough to attend found their experiences to be so traumatizing that they have refused to discuss them in detail. Needless to say, your assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated, and for it you shall receive due compensation. Say no more, Inquisitor! Say no more! I, Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, am well versed in the ways of the fairer sex. Since when? Mummy! Ahem! <clears throat> Mother dearest! I was under the impression you had departed for Uldar. And leave my beloved boy to keep on playing at being an inspector, as well as a father to a bloody mammoth. Bugger that. You're coming home right this instant. How can you say such things? It is my life's calling to be an inspector. And Gigi is my son. He is a Mandeville man. Grand. Grand as it is to see you, you have come at a most inopportune time. The young women of Ishgard are in need of a champion to defend them from fiends most foul. Come, Nashu. Come, Gigi. We shall demonstrate to my mother our peerless investigative skills and bring these criminals to justice. Thor's balls. He's stubborn. Probably gets it from his sorry ass of a father. Her accent got thicker right there. I trust you lot'll help me to keep him out of trouble. Right then, come along. Well, that could have gone better, and worse. Let's not keep them waiting. Please, do you think me so foolish to fall for their charade? From what I heard from the others, said knights bore not even the slightest resemblance to the Heaven's Ward. As if I had not already memorized every detail of my dear Sir Adafel's face. Oh, wherever could he be? I am truly outside her grace. My allowance all gone to waste on those... those... Oh, I dare not say it. Mayhap those awful rumors are true. Mayhap. I must needs accept that he now walks in Halanae's halls. Ooh, this maiden is vengeful. I demand satisfaction, swift and terrible vengeance. How dare they prey upon a lady's emotions to line their pockets with gill. If Sir Sharabert was here, he'd purge the lot of them like the festering sickness they are. Ah, uh, yes. A pity he too remains missing. So very much a pity. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, that grandmama over there is staring at us. Now, Gigi, a gentleman must be more careful with his words. First of all, you have only one grandmother. Second, and this is tremendously important, never, ever call her that. At least, not yet. Promise? Yes, father. I promise not to call Grandmama Julian. Grandmama Julian. 
Greetings, my lady. Let's gotta do the little hat thing. Oh, aren't you a charmer? And there I was thinking I might have to rip your bloody head off if you said the G word one more time. Like that, Papa Hildy? Ah, my faithful assistants. Have you gleaned any new information? Other than the fact that these women scorned seem to detest the fake knights with every fiber of their being. These two women were telling me all about what they'd do if they cornered Sir. Is this the best you can do, then? Bloody oaths and girlish fantasies, and you call yourself a Mandeville man. I assure you, mother, we are only just getting started. The tapestry of lies and deception behind which the truth hides is often unraveled with the tug of a single loose thread. I say, young lady, I would beg but a moment of your time. Somehow I doubt that young lady was targeted by the charlatans we seek. Aye, tis true. I too was taken in by the false promises of those awful, awful men. Long have I yearned for a chance to meet Sir Velwyn, so when they said I finally could, I didn't hesitate for even a moment. But when they escorted me to the manor and undid the blindfold, and I looked on the hideous faces of those so-called Grand Sirs, I screamed and fled. They were gone when I returned with the watch, but their neighbors said they had overheard them speaking about seeking shelter in a place called Idleshire. I know it's not much, but I pray this information helps you in your search. My lady, I swear to you here and now, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall not rest until these dastardly fiends are punished for their foul crimes. Huzzah! Three cheers for Papa Hildy. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! And there you have it. Our quarry can be found in Idleshire. Come, my loyal assistants. Justice waits for no gentleman. It's all well and good, but I've never heard of this Idleshire. Have you? Actually, yeah, I have. I kind of have a base there, sort of. Kind of. You mean, we're traveling to the Javanian hinterlands right now. Just like that. To Idleshire. Truly, this magnificent settlement is a testament to the hard work and camaraderie of her uplander and gobby citizens. Yes, well, I'm just glad we're no longer being pursued by fire breathing dragons, musket wielding crabs, and bomb throwing goblins. You know, the other ones. But they were no match for Lady Julian in that pen of hers, am I right? I want to see her make the gobbies fly again. God's sakes, Hildy. Except in Morgan, this lot would be dead in a ditch somewhere if it weren't for me. Nonsense! I would never let any harm come to my loyal assistant or my beloved son. Ah, uh, if I may interject. Now then, let us split up and question the good people of Idleshire. My keen inspector's sense tells me that one of them has knowledge of the false knights we seek. Probably. Alright. There was a quest that I did in Post Endwalker that I thought might have been the Hildy quest. Uh, it is not. I'm, I'm now thinking back on it, and I'm pretty sure the quest I'm thinking of, there's a person right here we needed to talk to, 
um, was... I'll finish in a second. Yes, yes! Loud jocks knows of grand sirs. Sneaky uplanders keep to selves. Mingle not with gobby flock, but each to own. Loud jocks says no questions, only jingly shine. Uh, I think it's part of the Tataru quest line, like the Tataru's Grand, not Tataru's Grand Adventures, uh, but maybe it is Tataru's Grand Adventures. I don't know. Anyway, Tataru has a quest line where you're like doing stuff for her boutique as she starts in Endwalker. And I think it's like the second or third quest you deal with. I'm going to run circles around this thing. Uh, the Sky Pirates from the Heaven Sword Alliance Raids. Oh, you must be talking about them, Grand Sirs. They drifted into Idleshire some time ago, as I recall. Pay the visits to the Great Library, though I couldn't tell you why. Gentleman Jack. Okay. Last one's over here. Uh, anyway. You come to Idleshire and I think you fight with someone. And for some reason I thought it was this quest, but it's not. That was the long story, made even longer. Oh, I know all about the Grand Sirs. Wait. Oh, I know all about the Grand Sirs. They heap to themselves in that building of theirs south of the round spot. You'd best watch out, though. They're a dangerous bunch, liable to kill you for looking at them cockeyed. It's entirely possible that I've gone completely and utterly mad, but are you perchance the long-lost twin sister of an Ishgardian noblewoman? What? I, uh, look behind you, a three-headed gob you. Why do I feel like I've not seen the last of that old woman? Is she one of the people pretending to be the Grand Sirs? Oh, it's just right over here. Oh, he's right there! If only we had the testimony of a concerned citizen which could conveniently direct us to the villain's precise location. You mean like this one that I'm about to tell you right now? The Grand Sirs are holed up in a building to the south of the markets. Good show, Morgan. There. That's the one. Come, let's inform the others. Would seem that no one is home. There is not we can do but wait, then. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, I just want to say that, that I really like this place. I think that you and me and Mama Nashu could have lots of exciting adventures if we stay here. Hmm, you may be right, Gigi. This community seems to have fostered an enlightened, free society, welcoming of honest souls willing to work and contribute to the greater whole. Did anyone happen to see a gazebo on the way in? As I live and Hildebrand, or yeah, Hildebrand, Heliador, Maximilian, Mandeville. Could that be? I say, could that be slow fix coin toss? Do you know this Gobby Inspector? I most certainly do. Why, Master Slow Fix was my very first employer. When traveling through Thanolin long ago, Gobby Flock was waylaid by Uplander Bandits. With no jingly shine to pay brass blades, we had no way to backtake goods. Until we make busy deal with Gentleman Uplander, that is. With fastness, 
he finds Uplander Bandits and brings much bangy boom and returns to Goodly Gobby's missing goods and great justice. Henceforth, Slowfix gains new appreciation for Uplanders, but for chance encounter with Gentleman Uplander, he never conceive, conceives of egalitarian utopia. One may even claim Hildy a founding father of Idleshire, with metaphorical tongue flaps, that is. Ha 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 ha! Oh, the memories! It was a near thing for the bandits were clever enough to see through my ingenious disguise as an innocent milkmaid. But in my haste to escape, I tripped over a barrel of fire sand and, as they say, boom gobby doo. Core, no busy deals for the wicked. No busy deals indeed. But leaving that delightful anecdote aside, you gods, Master Slowfix. Just looking at what you and your flock have made of these ruins is making me big eyes. Pshh. Gobby flock has come long way since wandering days, but we have not forgotten Gentleman Uplander's kindness. Slowfix is here to offer hand lending. Well, far be it from me to refuse. My son Gigi has grown quite fond of your magnificent city, and so I should like to stay with he here with him and my assistant for a time. We would not require much in the way of accommodations. A humble gazebo, for example, would more than suffice. Why settle for gazebo when perfectly good estate right behind you? Residents of buildings are in areas and Slowfix happy to evict them. But, but we were pursuing the fiends who lived here on suspicion of defrauding young women. Fraud? In Slowfix's egalitarian utopia, this he will not abide. All the more reason to let Gentleman Uplander and his flock stay instead of Grand Sirs. No need for Jinkly Shine either. Huzzah! A giant gazebo to call our own. Ah, uh, I do not know what to say. Thank you, Master Slowfix, thank you. No need for teary-eyed on tongue flax. Gobby Flock is possessed of moral obligation to repay Gentleman Uplander for past generosity. Enjoy new gazebo, and good luck with Hunt for Grand Sirs. Um, Papa Hildy, since this is our gazebo, is it okay if I draw our family crest on it? I can think of no better way to celebrate this joyous occasion, and perhaps draw the ire of our new home's former tenants. Come, let us go and purchase some paints together. This gazebo shall be your canvas. Now he's gone and gotten himself a sword and gazebo. Bloody hells, if he really thinks I'm going to let him keep on playing at being a father. I thought we were about to see Gilgamesh. Julian's over there sparring. <laughs> Morgan's taking a seat. Ah, is that not the most adorable little thing? And he does the gentleman pose. I love it.
Still no sign of the notorious Grand Sirs. I dare say we're going to need more paint. What do you got for me, Hildy? <sighs> Much as it pains me to admit it, a gentleman's stamina is not without limits. I dare say I could do with a spot of tea. Hey, Inspector! Is it just me? Or have those two been looking at us for the past few minutes? Oh, tis quite normal behavior for my adoring fans, I should think. When finally presented with an opportunity to meet their idol in the flesh, all too many succumb to their fear and flee. Well, maybe, just maybe, they're the grand bloody sirs. Come on, come on, they're getting away! Hearken to me, you dastardly rapscallions! You have nowhere to run! Reveal yourselves at once! I shall not ask you again! Come forth, Grand Sirs! Name yourselves and answer for your misdeeds! They're so old. Why do they get an epic walk? Like... Slayer of a thousand worms! The silver spear which hath pierced the very heavens! Warland! Master of magics ancient and awesome! The Divine Hand, which hath defeated all maladies, save senescence and incontinence! Goonspart! I will never remember those voices. And Sirs Excelsior! I, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Mayhap both? Hold on. Grand sires! <clears throat> Grand sirs! You stand accused of willfully and unlawfully convincing young maidens of Ishgard to attend private parties under false pretenses, thereby inflicting upon them terrible financial and emotional distress. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am come on behalf of these poor defenseless innocents and to see that no others are made to suffer as they did. Now, lay down your arms and surrender yourselves into my custody. Ha! The audacity of this boy. You should feel ashamed of your words and misdeeds. Oh, he's limit breaking, huh? Oh, that's Dragoon level 3. Whoa. Uh -oh. You will rue this day and rue it hard. Gods, how I miss this. The air streaming past, the blood pumping, the taste of copper on my lips, the slight dizziness. It was on a day like this that we met, wasn't it? And when we soared into those azure skies, we never truly came back down.
Did we just watch someone Dragoon LB3 into their death? Do mine eyes deceive? Pig's knee of my heart descended from Halliday's halls to guide me to her bosom? My beloved, my everything, long have I waited for this moment. Take me in your arms once more and lift me higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. So he did LB3 to his death. Holland, 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 Snake. Snake! Snake! I don't know if he's dead, actually. I feel like they're gonna pull him out and he'll be fine. Alas, poor Orlin. I knew him not in the slightest. But he seemed a decent man. Chicanery and attempted murder notwithstanding. You will rue this day and rue it hard. <laughs> Fair. Wait, I've seen this before. All too recently. <clears throat> yes, anyway, he's only mostly dead. If the master of magics, ancient and awesome, here acts with all haste, the man yet may be saved. Yes, I'll give it a go. I guess I can do it. Maybe. Oh, you're referring to me. I see, I see. Uh, with all haste, was it? Yes, yes. I'll get right on it. I don't think he was as lispy as that the first time I did it. And I didn't mean to have a lisp. Oh, mournful voice of creation. Send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thrall to command, that I may smite. No, oh, wait, that's no good. Him, let me see. Something of a rather less controversial tradition, yes? Something with more pep. A vortex of biting winds to win the flesh and smite my foes. Foes? I thought you were friends! <clears throat> uh, I must have uh, dozed off for a second. Satanet bugger me with a bleeding gible. My back! My back! Ugh! It would seem I've underestimated you lot. That makes two of us. Enough. Leave them be. Or do you not care what becomes of the mammoth? GG, 
But when? How? Oh no, that's the old lady. I thought I recognized you. First in Ishgard, then in Idleshire. You've been following us since we left the capital. Bearer of faces fair and fearsome. The midnight shadow which hath deceived kings and queens. Doris! You can't possibly have been so naive as to think we'd not see through your ridiculous disguises. And yet here you are. So effortlessly and easily lured into our trap. For which we are most graceful, mind. My companions are hardly cut out for the life on the road. All has been in preparation for this moment. The parties, the petty schemes. From the first, the objective of this grand design has been this singular mammoth. I swear to you, if you harm Gigi in any way, I will send Morgan after you. We have no desire to hurt the boy. We but require his help to reclaim that which is rightfully ours, our youth. <coughs> Confound it, I can't see. Damn! They're very slowly getting away. <laughs> the, the, the twitch. Papa Hildy! GG! Stay strong, my son. I swear I shall find you. Twelve strike me down for a fool. So desperate was I to seize the Grand Sirs that I failed to discern their true intent before it was too late. Now poor Gigi is in their clutches. What if I never see my beloved son again? I suppose we ought to be prepared for the worst. They could be halfway to Rods at Han by now. I very much doubt that, given that they were moving at an Adamantoise's pace. A little Milk Soap's right. Let's get after that old buggers. The old buggers. Huh? That's what my mentor used to call me. Among other things. Oh, the memories. Gotta speak with Hildy again, which is this way. I keep getting confused because I have other, uh quests still to do in this area like dungeons to run basically and it's throwing me where you at Hildy there you are so it seems that the Grand Sirs have been caught once more by the very inspector that was trying to catch them How ironic. Also, how premature. We have them, yes, but they still have Gigi. Damn it. If only some manner of opportunity would present itself. There it is. Ask and ye shall receive. We can ambush that wizened dragoon, take him hostage, and demand an exchange. Inquisitor Seer, you disappoint me. A gentleman cannot condone the violent kidnapping and ransom of his elders. No, no, we shall approach this problem as paragons of honor and virtue. Morgan will stalk and subdue the Grand Sir, then relieve him of his armor. How is stripping an old man naked more gentlemanly than taking him hostage? Rest assured, I shall reveal all soon enough. 
Godspeed, Morgan. Is Julian here? What does she have to say? As she does the lean against the tree. Let me guess. Wondering why I haven't gone and smacked them upside the head and put an end to this rubbish, eh? There's a time for cracking skulls and a, t a skulls and a time for letting your idiot of a son deal with his troubles on his own way. That's why. You all are fools. I ran right past you. Ah! Is he over here, like, taking a leak? Ah! I knew you! Wait, who are you again? There's something awfully familiar about those muscular forearms, those strong yet tender-looking fingers. I say, would you be so kind as to massage my shoulders, young lady? There's this lingering ache. This tension that Gonspark can't seem to soothe with his magics. Remove my breastplate? Oh, of course. How silly of me. Pray lend me a hand with the straps. Truly, young lady, you are a saint. I swear it's the little things you begin to appreciate. My dear departed wife used to help me with my armor, you know. Right, right, I should be seated to better receive your tender menstruations. Alright. Why don't you pet my, uh... Dog. While, uh, I... Ah, oh, the healing tingle. Would that I had a tincture of salamander with which to treat these aches. My little pigs, they used to spread some on my chest and under my nose to help me sleep through the night. Come, do not be shy. Work those soothing fingers into each and every knot. Slowly, make me forget my troubles. Harder, harder, higher, higher. Close your eyes and dream. <sighs> The old dragoon's soft snoring suddenly stops, and you begin to fear you may have borne witness to his final moments. Leaning closer, you extend a hesitant finger, only to stop short when a sudden spasm signals the resumption of his labored breathing. Now we steal his pants. With the utmost care, you remove Orland's sabatons and breaches, leaving the sleeping old man exposed to the elements and at the mercy of the nearby ravenous bears and tentacled morbles. May he rest in peace. Jesus. Sorry. Heidelin! Ah, oh, my stalwart assistant! By your return, I gather you have taken care of the Dragoon. And by taking care... I mean afford him all due courtesy as befitting a man of his years whilst returning with the equipment I require? Oops. Capital! Then without further ado, I shall disguise myself as Orland and free Gigi from captivity. But you two look nothing alike. They may be old and slow, but they're not blind. Oh, ye of little faith, you are in for a treat! For you shall have a front row seat to see the magnificent display of Mandervillian guile and subterfuge. Hey, is it time for dinner yet? We just ate your daft bugger. Oh, and where in the hells is Orland? I know he's got to take a piss every hour, but damn it, he could at least be quick about it.
Greetings, fellow ad antediluvians. I have returned. Bollocks. It's about time. Okay. No, that's bollocks. things. I want us back on the road in 10 minutes. Before we do that, we must first release young Gigi here. Tis behavior unbecoming a gentleman to keep children in cages. What in the seven hells are you blathering about? He is going to get away! No, he will not. See? Still here within my care. Right then, on a completely unrelated note, I shall now take the boy with me on a brief sojourn into the wilderness. Fury, take me, it's working. He's about to walk out of there with Gigi and they won't even try to stop him. So far, so good. Uh-oh. I'm cold and there are marbles after me. I'm me, but you are also me. But that can't be, unless... This is it. This is the moment when my life flashes before my eyes. Oh, my dearest Pixney. We'll be together at last. Attempt to trick me with a ruse so acnide it would make a minstrel blush. Ye gods, I never realized dying would hurt so much. Now's our chance, Gigi. Come with me. Vivi, wait. My son, what's gotten into you? Vivi. Vivi. Where have I heard that name before? Remember who you are, Vivi. What you are. A creation of the great Charlie and Archmagus Quan. 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 I, I was given life by... Grandpapa Quan. I remember now. We lived together, and he taught me many things about the outside world. What exactly do you remember, my son? 
Everything. Yes, everything. I remember that Grandpapa Kwan created me, that he took care of me, raised me, and that we were very happy. But then, but then he abandoned me. Grandpa Kwan abandoned me. He believed you were flawed, Vivi. That you lacked the power to turn back the hands of time and make him young again. And so, in his ignorance, he cast you out and died all alone. To turn back the hands of time. Then what we witnessed in the Crozier, with the Duke's priceless vase, that power could be brought to bear on people? But wait, how do you know all this? You couldn't have possibly been associates of this Archmagus Quan. We found his journals during one of our many trips into the Great Library. Scavenging for valuable relics is one of the few ways we have left to make a living. We were famed heroes of the war in our prime, with fortunes to match, but no soldier has the strength to triumph over time. And before we knew it, the hour of the sheath was upon us. Ishgard no longer had need of our services. So we came out here to eke a living, to keep doing what we do best until our bodies wouldn't let us. Imagine our surprise when we stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime. A second lifetime, as it were. A mammoth with the power to take that which was broken and restore it to its prime state. To turn back time with its temporal magics and give us back our misspent youth. Fury, take me. This is also... I don't even know if there's a precedent to determine whether or not this constitutes heresy. We knew where to look, even. With the journals, we determined that the mammoth was somewhere in the Western Highlands. A chance. For a second chance was within reach. And then we were forced to watch as you imbeciles pulled Vivi from the snow. Nearly ruining everything. Vivi, listen to me. Come with us, and we can help you to unlock your true potential. Just think what we could accomplish were you to master your magics. Not only could you make us young again, but you may even have the power to restore life to Archmagus Quan. V V V V V. Impossible. No magic can truly return the dead to us. At best, you can animate a corpse. And I need not review the precepts to declare that the products of necromancy are abominations in the eyes of the Fury. Gigi, wait. What of our adventures? What of our gazebo? You are a Mandeville mammoth. You have always been so kind to me, Papa Hildy, and I will forever be grateful for that. But Grandpapa Kwan made me. He made me, and I miss him. So even if it fails, I have to try. What are you doing? They're getting away. We have to stop them. Mayhap, we must respect Gigi's decision. So that's the end of that chapter, eh? You're giving up and coming back home? I too made a decision long ago. To become a traveling inspector. And I have ever stood by it. Mayhap it is from this singular stubbornness of mine that Gigi took inspiration. Nay, I cannot abide it. He is my flesh and blood, my son. I dare not let him use his temporal magics to pervert the natural order. Aye, it falls to me, 
his father, to ensure that Gigi keeps to the righteous path and only utilizes traditional methods of zombification to raise the dead. Inquisitor Seer, I must applaud your dedication to your work and cannot thank you enough for all that you have done on our behalf. Yet I fear if we continue as we are, GG may be driven to rash action. Therefore, I would ask that you suspend your pursuit of the Grand Sirs for a time, that I might be afforded the opportunity to convince my son to return peacefully. Well, seeing as how we can only guess at the full extent of Gigi's powers, it might prove dangerous to act aggressively should he choose to use them. I knew you would understand. Right then, there is no time to waste. Nashu, let us retire to our new gazebo and discuss our plans. I suppose it had been a shame had he given up that easily. Though that means I'll have to stick around even longer. On the other hand, if that bloody mammoth's really got the power to make them young again, then... I said I'd suspend my pursuit, and I will, but that doesn't mean I won't continue my investigations into that mammoth and its powers in Ishgar. Ah, I see you saw fit to return to the capital as well. The Inquisition has a rather large collection of heretical tomes, including many of Charlian origin, and I had a mind to scour them for information on temporal magics. This, of course, all for the sake of... Confirming the mammoth's heretical origins. Yes, only that. Hmm? Why are you looking at me like that? As if to imply that my interest in these matters is more than a professional one. I'm sure I don't know what you're not talking about. Thank you, Morrigan. That will be all. And we finish episode three. Hildebrand, Mandeville, Nashu, Seer, Julian, Gigi, the didn't see that. The Grand Sirs, Pigsney. See you, Inspector. Thanks for watching, YouTube. I hope you enjoyed part three of the Heaven Sword Hildebrand quests. Let me know what you thought down below with a like, a comment, and a subscribe if that's your thing. And don't forget, once again, you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Caleb Games here, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, starting about 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks for watching, YouTube. I love you, and I'll see you next time.